there kickers and welcome back to Kick the Table for Sunday, February 2nd, 2014. My name is Mike and I aim to keep you up to date with Kickstarter projects in the tabletop games category. Now this week, uh, Kickstarter just literally exploded with tabletop games. There is 166 live tabletop games projects up on Kickstarter this week with 50 launched in just the last week. I can't possibly cover them all, but in this video we're going to go through 14 projects that are closing up in the next week, followed by 27 of the 50 that have launched in the last week. Now, uh, if, the, if this pace continues, I probably can't continue to do these videos in as much depth as I have, and I'd sort of be interested in potentially scaling it back into something that uh, was a bit more curated and was more focused on uh, the projects that I find interesting based on my own sort of um, uh, tastes, I guess. Um, <clears throat> but I'd like to hear your opinion on that before I do anything drastic. So please leave a comment either in the YouTube video or uh, on the Board Game Geek blog post. And there should be a link to that blog post in the description of this video. You can follow me on Kickstarter where I'm at Kick the Table. Uh, I, every morning I get on the bus and um, as I discover new Kickstarter projects, I post about them there. You can send me feedback to kickthetable at gmail.com. Uh, other than that, please subscribe to the video, subscribe to the BGG blog post. I actually get better numbers out of YouTube. I get nothing out of BGG, so I'd really like it if you subscribed on the YouTube video. Uh, you can thumbs up the video, thumbs up the BGG blog post that goes with it, which will have a more comprehensive list of all the projects that uh, we're going to talk about, as well as the rest of the set, because there's a good 80 projects we could easily talk about this week, which is quite a lot. Uh, that's all I have for this week, so I'm going to go to bed. But uh, So you won't see an outro from me this week, but uh, stay tuned, and we're going to jump straight into the 14 projects that uh, are ending in the next week, starting with Chaosmos, a project that I backed, which you've probably got literally minutes to jump in on, I highly recommend it. It looks great. Catch you next week. For more, kick the table. Chaos Moss. As the universe ends, the hunt begins. The universe is ending, and the only hope for survival is the mysterious Ovoid. Players must navigate the galaxy using the artifacts that they find to look for the Ovoid, and when they find it, they must keep it from the other players, for whoever holds the Ovoid when the Chaos Clock strikes zero is the winner. Many stretch goals have been unlocked during the campaign, including a modular board, nicer components, player shields, rules and components for several game variants, and even two more aliens, bringing the total race count to 10. You can get a copy of Chaos Moss for a $60 pledge, plus $10 shipping to Western Europe, or plus $25 shipping anywhere else. Hurry though, as the Chaos Clock is running out, and you have literally hours to get into this campaign. Scribes Arena, a fantasy-themed word-solving game. In Scribes Arena, players create and decipher their opponent's words using a wide variety of powers and spells. Players will choose between a simple duel, guild play, or gladiator mode. A random battlefield is selected which decides how long and how many secret words you must write behind your game board. After choosing their words, players must select a patron god and recruit powerful allies to their side. Each turn, players will use spells, ally abilities, and god powers to try and solve their opponent's words. You can get Scribes Arena for a pledge of 45 Canadian dollars, and you need to add 20 Canadian dollars to ship outside of the US, Canada, and Hong Kong. Ares Magazine is a bi-monthly, 80-page magazine chock full of science fiction interviews and articles wrapped around a complete and ready-to-play board game. The board game for issue number one is War of the Worlds, designed by Bill Banks. It is a two-player game that borrows heavily from H.G. Wells' classic story of the same name, the Martian player secretly chooses one of five objectives. Murderize all the humans, crush the army, colonize, create a peace treaty, or abduct the heroine. The Martian player then has 12 turns to achieve the objective, while the human players try to thwart them. You can get the first issue of Ares magazine for $6 without the game, or $20 with the game. Non-US backers will need to add $15 shipping, except Canadian backers who get their own special pledge levels. There are pledge levels that come with a six-issue subscription as well. Florenza the Card Game is a standalone game in which players play the heads of the most important families of Florence during the Renaissance. As in the original Florenza game, players will try to hire the best artists to embellish the monuments of the city. 
They can also build workshops or houses and join guilds to strengthen their power and gain more resources and money. There are pledge levels that include the game Ark and Noah as well. You can get a copy of Florenza the Card Game for a pledge of $39 and you need to add $25 to ship outside the US. Ultimate Werewolf is the ultimate party game. In a basic game, players are given a card that tells them if they are a werewolf or a villager. Gameplay proceeds through a series of day and night cycles. During the day, all the players vote to lynch one player they suspect of being a werewolf, and at night the werewolves will dine on one of the villagers. Dozens of unique roles are available in the game, and the campaign includes 16 different art packs to choose from. There are also pledge levels containing One Night Ultimate Werewolf and Ultimate Werewolf Inquisition. You can get a copy of Ultimate Werewolf Deluxe Edition for $25, and it comes with one art pack. You need to add $10 to ship outside the US. Choose Your Crew Pirates, a game of deceit and rivalry. In Choose Your Crew, players compete to be the first to gather 16 pirates for their crew. On the way, you can sabotage your rival's efforts with cannon fire, a bout of scurvy, or inciting a mutiny in their midst. All the while, you can convince more pirates to join your crew with spiced rum and treasure. A copy of the game comes at the $25 Australian dollar pledge level, with free shipping to the US, Canada, and Australia. All other backers need to add $10. Villagers, a construct and conquer card game. A new land has been discovered. As a mighty king, you have a grand opportunity to expand your empire by building new villages here. Unfortunately, many of your fellow rulers also hope to stake a claim in this new world. Whose villages will stand and whose will fall? Villages have has been a very successful Kickstarter and has raised nearly a hundred times its $1,000 goal. You can get a copy of Villages at the $20 pledge level and you need to add $10 to ship outside the US. Famous game designer playing cards for 2014. The four kings in a regular deck of cards represent four kings from history. This deck of cards will have four famous game designers on them. To vote on which game designers go on the cards, you need to pledge at least $3. A copy of the deck, once it's produced, will come at the $5 pledge level. The rest of the cards in the deck are up for grabs, and if you pledge at a higher reward tiers, you can even advertise your own business on them. Spurs, a tale in the Old West. In Spurs, players take on the roles of adventurers in the Old West, competing to handle various challenges. Players will take turns moving around the main board, carrying out classic activities in the Old West, such as cattle herding, bank robbing, or horse breaking. Gunslingers can go in search of wanted outlaws, escort stage stagecoaches, or deal with gangs of desperados. Hunters will seek wildlife in the forests, and prospectors will seek gold in the mountains, and maybe you'll just hang out and gamble in the town's saloons. Be careful, though, as you never know when another player will challenge you to a duel and try to rob you. You can receive a copy of Spurs at the $45 pledge level if you're in the US, $65 pledge level to ship to Canada, $85 to ship to the EU and the UK, and $100 to ship anywhere else. The Merged D6. Ever need to roll two D6 and add up the results? Cubes don't roll all that well, and there's all that yucky math at the end. Well, now there's an answer. The merged D6, or MD6, is able to produce the same 36 possible outcomes with the same frequency as rolling two D6s. Each MD6 die is the same size as a regular D20, and six of the 36 faces are coloured differently, allowing you to simulate rolling doubles. You can get two of these MD6s for $7, and you need to add $8 to ship them if you're out of the US. With higher pledge levels, you get more dice. Japanese The Game, a language learning card game that works a bit like Mad Libs with cards that have Japanese words on them and markings that help you to put them together into grammatically correct Japanese sentences. One deck of 52 cards is enough for two players to play together and there are rules for a solo mode as well. As you play the game you will learn the actual language of Japanese. Any pledge will provide you with a print and play of the standard deck and a $10 pledge will give you a permanent print and play subscription. 
If you'd like a physical copy of the Core Deck, it will cost you $20, with $6 of shipping if you're an international backer. I certainly wish I'd had this when I was at school. Hajime mashite, Mike Des. Dozo yurashiku. In four tribes, players take on the roles of one of two battling empires and try to balance supplying desperately needed provisions to the northern villages and waging war with your sworn enemy. There are six villages laid out between the warring players, each with an elder from one of the four tribes and a number of different needs. Players will take turns using their cards to fulfill the needs of the villagers and win the support of the village elders. Once the villagers' needs are met, the player who has best done so will take that village elder to their scorecard, and the game ends whenever a player has one elder from each of the four tribes, or has all three elders from any one tribe. You can get a copy of four tribes for a $30 pledge, and you need to add $10 shipping to ship to Canada, or $18 to ship anywhere else. Tiny Epic Kingdoms is a 4x micro game. Each player will take a fantasy race such as orcs, elves, dwarves or humans and lead them to victory by collecting and trading resources, advancing your race's tech tree, building a tower and purely deterministic combat. This campaign has smashed through a number of stretch goals and the base game now comes with larger cards, purpose specific game pieces, battle dice and 13 races. You can get the base box for $16 and you need to add $12 of shipping to ship out of the US. Fate of the Norns Gelvig is a fast-paced game that involves iconic Norse Viking gods. You bluff, bid, and score your way to victory. We covered Fate of the Norns last week, but now this week the campaign is funded and is coming to a close. The way the pledge works is that you cover the margin to the publisher, which is $10, and they give you a link where you can purchase the deck at cost for $5 direct from the manufacturer and then you pay shipping to them. Shipping to Australia runs at about $3, and I don't think it would get much worse than that. Okay, let's change gears to projects that were launched within the last seven days. Now there's 27 projects to get through, so I'll go as quick as I can. Alchemy is a card game that turns three to five players into competing apprentice alchemists trying to impress their master by being the first to complete a set of potions in a laboratory space they all share. Each turn, players can rush to finish their works or sabotage those who are pursuing the same potions they are, and once you've completed a potion, you can keep it for the victory points or drink it to try and get even further ahead. You can get a copy of Alchemy at the $25 pledge level, and you need to add $15 for shipping outside the US. Terrain Odyssey, the battle card game, is based on traditional RPG battle systems. Experience the amazing battles in Terraria as the commanding officer of your party of adventurers. Each match you play is like a random encounter battle in an RPG world. But this time, instead of creatures, you will be fighting other adventurers just as determined as you. You can get two player versus pack at the $20 pledge level. You need to add $12.95 shipping to Canada or $14.15 to the EU. Other region shipping will be confirmed as the campaign goes on. Porker chips are high quality 10 gram ceramic chips that feature a pig logo on and bacon related slogan for bacon lovers. There appear to be 10 different designs and you can get one at random for a $6 pledge or a collector's set for 10 at an $18 to $20 pledge depending on if you can get into the early bird. You need to add $4 or $6 to ship those sets outside of the US, and there are higher pledge levels if you want more chips. Mmm, bacon. Draco Magi is a new strategic card game by Robert Burke and Richard Lonius. Can you rise to power by proving your dragon mastery? Players deploy their dragons to various battlegrounds to gather the various gems found there. This is not a micro game, it comes with over 125 cards featuring some beautiful artwork, but the campaign runners have decided not to have any Kickstarter exclusives and instead are offering the game to Kickstarter backers for $15, which is a significant is discount on the $25 MSRP. If you're a Canadian or Mexican backer, you need to pledge $20. $28 is required if you're anywhere else except Brazil, and if you're in Brazil, you can get the game for a $36 pledge. Zeppelin Attack is a deck-building game featuring targeted player combat. 
You play as one of the villainous masterminds from the spirit of the century pulp setting, bent on subjugating the flotilla of Machine Age airships. Gain victory points by launching fiendish attacks against rival players to force their zeppelins into retreat. Use defensive countermeasures to deflect your enemy's attacks. Send your minions on cunning operations to enrich yourself with fate points. Spend your gains on more powerful mercenary cards while purging weaker cards from your deck. You can get a physical copy of Zeppelin Attack for a $30 pledge in the US. If you're outside of the US, you need to do a bulk pledge for $150 to get six copies, but shipping is included. Alternatively, you can grab the print and play files for just a $1 pledge. Cyberpunk Soundtracks is a collection of retro-futuristic tabletop gaming soundscapes, sound effects, and songs to set the mood and inspire creative gaming sessions for cyberpunk and cyberspace or futuristic miniatures games. Games such as Heavy Gear, Warhammer 40k, Battletech. No endorsement is implied, these are just examples of games that might be orally enhanced by this project. There are several embedded SoundCloud sampler files on the campaign homepage where you can listen to slip it snippets of what you get for your pledge. You can get 30 tracks, which is the equivalent of 3 hours, for a $30 pledge, or 100 tracks, which is about 7 hours, for a $50 pledge. All files are delivered digitally. Foam Brain Dice Spin Pins Spin pins are metal pins that contain a back piece with an arrow and a free-spinning front piece with a random element such as numbers. By spinning the front, you can randomly select one of the numbers on it. The pin back allows them to easily attach to a bag, shirt, or jacket. Spin pins are 1.5 inches in diameter and weigh about 1.5 ounces. Spin pins come in four colors across 12 different designs, including D20, D12, D% percent, D10, D8, D6, D4, D2, rock, paper, scissors, D6 with pips instead of numbers, fudge dice, and emoticons. For $10, you get one pin of your choice shipped in the US, all higher tiers include free worldwide shipping, with the first one being two spin pins for $20. Westerly Reboot Westerly is a cooperative game for up to six players. In it you will face countless perils as you try to guide your party through the wilds of the untamed American frontier to your ultimate goal, California. It's going to take skill, daring and just a touch of luck to get everyone there in one piece. At the start of the game, each player will assume the identity of one of 50 unique characters, each with his or her own strengths and weaknesses. Once you're on the road, you will face catastrophe and challenge that is randomized each time you play. There are rivers to cross, wild animals to fight, diseases to overcome, unsavory characters to defeat, and some very difficult decisions to face. Win or lose, your group is guaranteed to have a unique and memorable experience every time you play. You can get a copy of Westerly at the $50 pledge level, and at the time of recording there are still spots open in the $40 early bird pledge level. In either case, you need to add $30 to ship outside the US. Tinker Gear Chips These are steampunk-inspired metal poker-sized chips or coins ready for use in tabletop gaming, in five metal finishes, chrome, antiquated copper, antiquated bronze, black nickel, and dyed black. They are made of a zinc alloy and are poker chip sized, 39mm in diameter and 3.5mm deep, weighing in at just under an ounce each. You can get 5 gear chips, one in each finish, for a pledge of $9 and you need to add $6 to ship outside the US. There are higher pledge levels coming with more chips. Rock, Paper, Scissors, War, a pay what you want card game. This game combines two childhood favourites with a twist. At the start of the game, each player gets a deck containing half of the cards and draws a hand of four cards. At the count of three, both players play a card of their choice. Rock beats scissors, scissors beats paper, and paper beats rock. There are hero versions of each card, and the hero versions beat the non-hero cards. There is also a bomb which beats everything. If there is a tie, then players go to war. Each player antes in another card off the top of their deck, and then plays another card from their hand. You keep going until there's a clear winner who takes all of the cards that were played. You can get a deck of 50 cards with instructions for a $4 minimum pledge, plus $4 shipping to ship outside the US. This is a pay-what-you-want campaign, so each pledge comes with a minimum and a suggested amount. Ryan Smith's City City is a family-friendly competitive urban planning board game. 
Players use their strategic skills and a bit of luck to develop the most prosperous city. Each player begins the game with a bank loan and two citizens. Players choose where to start their fledgling city. The region quickly develops, with roads crisscrossing the landscape and towers arching into the sky. The game ends once all the natural resources have been consumed and the players score citizens, towers and saved money. You can get a copy of City for 55 Canadian dollar pledge and there are still slots open at the $45 Canadian, early, Canadian dollar early bird pledge level. Shipping is covered for all pledges, but the publisher has requested that backers contact them if they live somewhere particularly remote. In The Convicted, players become convicts who are given a second chance to expiate their crimes. In order to prove their devotion, they need to colonise new lands in the name of the king. They start building their headquarters, a town, with just a handful of footmen and a few structures. Through the development of fortifications, buildings, researching new technologies, gathering resources and training recruits, they can transform their colony into an impenetrable fortress. Alas, the new world is full of indigenous inhabitants who by any means possible try and get rid of unwanted colonizers. Countless hordes of barbarians, forest people, ferocious monsters and wolfmen with their beasts and war machines will spare no effort to storm the town and its defenders. The whole gameplay consists of a campaign of 10 matches, 90 minutes each for a total of 15 hours. The use of random opponent selections and attack directions make each game a unique experience. The Convicted is a cooperative experience for 1-4 to four players. You can get a copy of the game for a $50 pledge, and you need to add $15 to ship outside the US. There are still slots open at the $48 early bird pledge level. The Infected, a quarantine card game, is based on the famous werewolf and mafia card games. The Infected's Infected offers a new wave of different characters and more roles. As a survivor, you must try and flush out the Infected during the day. At night, the Infected will try and kill the remaining survivors. The base game comes with 11 basic survivors, 5 infected, and a variety of special roles, including leader, doctor, gypsy, student nurse, scout, and what appears to be a psycho. There are several expansion packs available as add-ons, each of which add 5 more roles to the game. These include the military pack, the family pack, the mysterious pack, and the infected pack. You can get the basic edition of the game, which contains 26 roll cards, for £10, and you need to add... One pound for shipping outside of the USA and the UK. Otters, a kid-friendly card game, is a ten-minute strategy card game for kids and grown-ups. It is full of adorable otters. On their turn, players will send otters from their hand of differing values to play at one of the playgrounds on the table. Otters have point values and some have special abilities. Once a playground is full, the player with the highest number of points worth of otters there will win the playground. Once all of the playgrounds have been won, players add up their score to see who wins. You can get a copy of Otters for a $12 pledge, and you need to add $8 to ship outside the US. If you want to play with 3 or 4 players, you'll need to add an additional deck for $9. Combat Kittens is a quick 3-5 to five player card battle game. Each player leads a group of ferocious and adorable kittens. Jewels and brawls are fought. And when the fur settles, the player with the most gold will emerge victorious. You can get a copy of Combat Kittens at the $25 pledge level, and you need to add $20 to ship outside the US. Cthulhu, the Great Old One, is an exciting new fast-paced game for 2-8 to eight players. At the start of the game, a deck of 80 cards is dealt face down to all players. Each turn, players steal a card from another player at random and try to make pairs out of their hands. They may also play horror cards on one another for their effects. At the end of the game, whoever is holding the Great Old One loses, unless that player also played the Cultist. There are two versions of the deck. There's an unlimited version for $20 and a limited edition version with alternative artwork for $25. You need to add $12 to ship outside the US. President Wars, Battle Feud Through the Centuries. 44 presidents go head-to-head -head in this card and dice battle game. Take them on alone or battle a friend. At the start of the game, each player is dealt 22 presidents. Both players turn over the top card of their deck at the same time, and those two presidents will battle using custom die that come with the game. 
If your president wins, he goes back on the bottom of your deck to fight again another day. But if your president loses, he's removed from the game. Each president card comes with a picture and a brief bio. You can get the deck of 44 President Wars cards and the three official dice for just $6. Then you need to add $15 for shipping outside the US. Mobtown. Towns are yours for the taking in Mobtown. The local rats, sharks, foxes, snakes and weasels will help you get a piece of the action. Mobtown is played in three rounds. Each round starts by laying out different properties to form a town. Then players use their draw cards to take over the different properties until the law shows up, at which point players score based on the properties they control and the agendas they've been able to complete. You can get a copy of Mobtown for a $25 pledge and shipping is covered. For $35, you can get a copy of the City Limits expansion as well. Lagoon, Land of Druids. In Lagoon, players use their druids to perform various actions on a modular board. Common actions involve exploring new sites and adding to the board, moving around, summoning fellow druids back into play, and unravelling sites to remove them from the board. Every site on the board comes with a unique magic power, and if your druid occupies that site, you may use that power. In fact, all of your druids share the powers of the sites they occupy, so having five druids on five different sites allows them each to use all five of the powers. Each site belongs to one of three energies, and when the game ends, the player who supported the dominant energy is the winner. You can get the game for a $35 pledge in the US, a $45 pledge in Canada, and a $55 pledge internationally. Lineage, the martial arts strategy game. Players start the game with a master and a student on the board. When the student has trained up and retrieved five animal cards, they become masters as well. And when a player gets both masters back to the centre, they win. While this is going on, one of the players controls the emperor and leads his army to conquer the towns in the four corners of the board. If they achieve this goal, they win. The game board is modular, consisting of 25 octagonal double-sided tiles and 36 square tiles. You can get a copy of Lineage for a $39 pledge, and you need to add $30 to ship outside the US. If you're a Canadian backer, there are special pledge levels for you to avoid the international shipping costs. Maze Master, an epic card game for two or more players. Stone, zombies and even physics are merely obstacles to be surpassed as you build and struggle through your maze to reach the prize. Each turn, players select up to three action cards, which allows them to build, move, battle or more. Once each player has selected their actions, the turn is executed. Amongst the chaos, you must get to the centre of the map and get the relic. And once you have this powerful relic, you need to get it out of the mountain to win. But your fellow players may not be so eager to see that happen. You can get a copy of Maze Master for £18, and you need to add £7 to ship outside the US. Games of Art This campaign covers three games which all feature and use classic and modern art in their design and gameplay. When you pledge, you may select any of these games individually, or you may bundle them for greater savings. The first game is called Games of Art, and it's a book of <coughs> games designed by Sid Saxon, in which players use coloured markers to collectively create their own works of art in the style of seven modern art masters. Games of Art can be played in 15 to 16 minutes by two, three or four players ages eight and up, and can be yours for a pledge of $22. The second game, Petite Pastiche, gives players an opportunity to mix colours using palette cards and recreate the palettes used by 23 different classical European and American artists in creating 23 of their masterpieces, painted over a 6th century period of time. Petite Pastiche plays in 45 to 60 minutes with 2 to 4 players ages 10 and up and can be yours for a pledge of $50. Fantastica, the rucksack edition, is set in a fantasy world of terrific 18th and 19th century art, portraying intrepid adventurers and the beasts they must subdue to sub pursue their quests. Fantastica, the rucksack edition, plays in 30 to 60 minutes with 2 to 4 players ages 9 and up, but simplified rules are included to allow children aged 6 and up to play with adult help. You can get Fantastica, the rucksack edition, for a pledge of $33. 
In addition to these three games, backers can also add on copies of Rococo and Cubist to their pledge, and you can get a box with all five of these games for a pledge of $140. There is a shipping breakdown at the bottom of the campaign page. Fireteam Zero is a cooperative game for up to four players who must cut a path through an endless swarm of deadly monsters in order to discover and defeat the ultimate evil behind them. Each player possesses a set of brutal combat skills that are represented by a deck of cards unique to that character. Play cards to devastate the creatures in your way, help your teammates survive the onslaught, or even reshape the tactical landscape within the proper application of explosive ordnance. The battle is fought across three maps of increasing difficulty, each one bringing more and tougher enemies than the last. Players must search for and complete mission objectives in order to progress and bring them one step closer to the final showdown. You can get the base game of Fireteam Zero for a pledge of $80. You need to add $15 shipping to ship outside the US. And there are a number of other add-ons and expansions you can get as well. Tinker Wheels is an engaging activity game that helps children read, write, and construct sentences in a grammatically correct way. Kids in preschool, kindergarten, and first grade will develop their literary skills while having a blast tinkering with the wheels and finding a matching word or sentence for each picture. Tinker Wheels comes with ten self-contained units, or pods, featuring five themes that every kid loves. Travel, pets, play, zoo, and music. The set includes two different difficulty levels to start engaging your little one as early as two years of age. You can get your very own first edition Tinker Wheels set for a pledge of $20 to the US, a $30 pledge for Europe, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, China, Japan and Korea, and you need to add a $60 to ship anywhere that wasn't listed. Castle Assault is a customizable spatial card game for one or two players. Players control a castle on either side of the battlefield. They then play cards from their hand to the game board, and these cards march or charge to the opposing castle based on the text of the cards and your action choices. Victory is through destruction of your opponent's castle. You can receive a copy of Castle Assault, which includes a game board, four dice, and 246 cards for a pledge of $39 to ship to the US, $64 to ship to Canada and Mexico, and $74 to ship internationally. Drawing Blanks is an absurd, outright offensive drawing game that will make you question your moral fibre. That's from the campaign page. The rulebook contains several variations of gameplay where players try to draw something offensive, outrageous or crude while the rest of their team attempts to guess what it is. This is definitely an adults-only style of party game, but with the right group it could be a lot of fun. You can get a copy of Drawing Blanks for a $25 pledge, but they are only able to ship to the US. For non-US backers, there is a $15 print-and-play level that allows you to print all 432 despicable cards. Zambies the Card Game In a post-apocalyptic world, weapons and defences have run slim. Zombies become the new weapon of choice, and all chaos breaks free when your enemy throws a zombie on your doorstep. When you're eliminated, you get to collect all the zombies in your pool, and each turn, toss them at people. You can get a copy of Zambies for a $26 pledge, and you need to add $10 shipping outside of the US. There are higher reward tiers that include a mini expansion, and even a drinking game. What if we were entering into a new time? A time when the very systems of control and commerce that we had believed to be the status quo were somehow no longer relevant? What if we were faced with a new medium, a new network, 